Hi, this is Governor Barbara Roberts, and I couldn't miss this opportunity to wish a happy birthday to the city of Milwaukee, one of my favorite cities in the entire state. So happy birthday, Milwaukee. What I really think is going to be the best part of this is that we have people that are, you know, we just lost Ms. Briggs, mm -hmm. and there's more people like her that are really old that have all this history. And if it's not written down or if it's not taken up like this, we talk about all these people coming and moving in, there'll be nothing to give them. <clears throat> they don't work here. They only live here. Mm -hmm. And so if we don't have something to give them, you can't expect them to embrace Milwaukee. <clears throat> so that's why I think it's important and uh, definitely wish it a, hundred, a happy 120th. Okay, my name is Alice Roden now. As I grew up, it was Alice Kelts. Well, the name is Harley Brown. Everybody called me Brownie. My name is Bob Galway. I'm married to Patty. Hey, Brad Olson. Chris Davis. Chan A. Houston. Chips. So uh, I'm Corey Beckman, formerly Corey Lights. Dave Ashenbrenner. Like that. David Tyler. Hi, I'm David Parker. I was born Debbie Schreiber. Um, I, I've i been Debbie Lipton forever so long. This is Nicodemus. My name is Dick Matthews. My name's Yvette Van Dyke. Uh, my name is Hamid Shibata Bennett. Yeah, I'm Janet Cartmill. Uh, my name's Joel Bergman. Uh, my name's John Smith. My name is Kay Endel. My name is Kent Sheehan. I'm Gary Klein. I uh, was born October 23rd, 1946. And uh, Ronald Klein, uh, number two in the family, and uh, uh, September 10, 1945. And Doug Klein, or Douglas Klein, I was born uh, November 8th, 1942. Uh, Larry Cherdino. Lisa Lashbrook. Stephen Lashbrook. Stephen. Uh, my name is Linda Carr. So my name is Lisa Ann with an E. Canyon Rinker. My name is Lyle Phelps. I'm yeah. So my name is Marty Hanley. I am the supervisor at the Milwaukee Community Center. Michael Mantel. Yeah. Molly. Molly Douglas. Um, I'm Nancy Zumwalt Whitting. Pam Denham. Yeah. I'm Patty Cowboy. <laughs> Robert Massey. Okay. Hi, Sabina. Thank you for doing this with us. Hi, Sabina. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Sabina. Sabina Spencer. Spicer. Ah! He's got Spencer here. I know. Yeah, I blame Greg. Yeah. <laughs> and your last name? Oh, Harris. Uh, I'm Scott Barber. Uh, Terry Geyer Brindell. My name's Tina Kirk. Wes. And, and you have a last name? You're up, John. Okay. Uh, okay, fine. My name is Wilda Parks. My name is Adrian Thomas. Yeah. And moved to here, I think, when I was nine, maybe eight, eight or nine. I moved to Milwaukee in the uh, fall of 1974. Grew up in Milwaukee with a very short stint in Southeast Portland. My, mm -hmm. The first house my parents bought mm -hmm. was in Southeast Portland, but then... Um, as soon as they were able, they bought a big house up River Road. Um, ah, which nice. Is, yeah, well, it's yeah. from my grandma. My uh, my mother's side was connected here. My mother, my mother's family grew up in uh, Bell Station. I've lived in Milwaukee for about five and a half years. Uh, probably thirty-three years. Two years, three years. And moved to Milwaukee when I was five. Um, grew up there, went to Rex Putnam oh. High School. Um, going on six and a half years. Almost a year, been okay. living here in Milwaukee. And um, I started the first three years of my life out in Happy Valley, but we moved to Ardenwald in 1950. I think I'm almost at 27 years. Yeah. And I'm a couple years yeah. behind her. I've lived here in Milwaukee since uh, 2012. Born in 1951 in Milwaukee here. Oh, in Milwaukee? Actually, no, I was born in St. Vincent's in Portland, but we were living in, just outside Milwaukee on the farm. I was born at Dwyer Memorial Hospital in 1969. My sister and I were the first twins born in the hospital. Oh. 
all my life except for I lived away all over the United States for 20 years. I was born in the same location that I live on, on 43rd and Railroad Avenue. I was born September 26, 1933. Gosh. 12 or 13 years ago, so it was about 2000. So I've been in Milwaukee since I was a few days old. Our family moved here in uh, 1959, I believe. Seven years. Seven years. Yeah, a couple years now, and now my family and I live up here. And then we bought a new house here in Milwaukee. In 1962. We being my mom and dad bought a uh, new house here in Milwaukee. We moved here. 1962. Oh, I came here in 1966 with my parents. Uh, my family has been in the Milwaukee area since probably the early 1940s, somewhere in there. I was born in 1985 here in Milwaukee uh, on the property that Milwaukee Floral sits on, five acres there. Uh, approximately 19 years. Um, I lived in Milwaukee for 30 plus years. We had a big house. Uh, my grandfather built it and he used pegs instead of nails. Uh, I've been in been here for about, uh, about 18 years, but technically I actually live in a grove. 62 years as a pharmacist in Milwaukee. Yes, well. Yeah, I was the fifth oldest pharmacist, licensed pharmacist in the state. That's six years. I was actually born here as well. Um, uh, actually, it was 63 years ago. And I've been here since I in Milwaukee since I was nine months old. My parents adopted me. I was born in Portland and grew up in Selwood for about the first 10 years, and then we moved to Milwaukee and been here pretty much ever since. And it's coming on 10 years. Uh, approximately seven years. I've lived in Milwaukee three years. We have now lived in Milwaukee about almost a year. And, uh, so in 1948, the day uh, before I started school in the first grade, we moved from the apartment uh, to our house in, in Milwaukee, which my parents had built. Came to work at the Perry Pharmacy on the corner of Main and Monroe on June 15th of 59, and was there till 1998. We needed to downsize, and I have a niece here. I like we liked Portland. We'd been to Portland, and just started doing coming down here about five times actually, and did a whole search of the area and really liked Milwaukee. So well, I think my my dad's mom moved here because of my grandpa, but my mom's mom, I think they moved here because of the shipyards. Uh, we bought a house in Milwaukee, and we wanted to be within walking distance of some amenities like the library and the river, and we found a place. We have to do something different here, and uh, what would it be? What do you think? And I said, I don't know, Bill of Ola. And I, and I actually grew up at 40th and Adams, and uh, that was our homestead that we got in 1894. Uh, I was little, I think I was four or five. Mm -hmm. Um, when we moved here, and my aunt lived next door, so it's just the whole family has lived here. And they needed a bigger house and more room and a nice school district. Um, it was really uh, a good move. And I spent the uh, the summer after my freshman year uh, up at Crater Lake, working at Crater Lake, and I worked for a cook up there. And when I went back to Springfield, there was no jobs back then. And I called the guy up and he says, yeah, I, I got a place for you to work up here. And so at that time, there's a restaurant named Libby's and it used to be called Speed's. And I worked for Old Speed until he fired me. 
Well, my wife and I had been married for a couple of years. We decided we wanted to settle down and have a family and wanted our own house. And uh, we just happened to, our realtor and my wife found this little house in Milwaukee and we jumped on it. We came up here and apparently in Milwaukee we wanted to come up and and uh, my dad wanted to live by water. So they looked at places from Medford up here and, and looked at different places and they, they found it was a rainy day. Mom and dad were over by the Willamette looking at this house and a seaplane took off. And mom said, I could live at a place where a seaplane flies in front of your house. And so uh, I challenged my girlfriend to uh, move out of Portland and move into a place where there was more property around us and she thought I was crazy because she grew up near Milwaukee and didn't want anything to do with it and now she loves it. We're living in Portland looking for a house. And I didn't want that tract house. We wanted something cozier, cuter, more individual. And so we found a place that's, I wanted, it was really specific about being on or near the river. And we found one. There's a library down here in Milwaukee. That's not far, I'm gonna go there. The library was easy to find. Pamphlets were all nice and neatly stacked. I took five from my complex and my apartment and it was perfect. And so that first put Milwaukee on the map for me. Um, just all, all the friends we had, and I think, you know, the, the summer nights, you know, playing Simon Says and just being able to be out late with all our friends and twilight and everything. Um, my wife and I were living in Brazil at the time, and we were house hunting, living in Brazil. This house, got, the house we currently live in came on the market. We wanted to put an offer in on it. It went off the market. Uh, then when we came back for Christmas, it was on the market again. We visited the house and loved the house. And uh, that's how we ended up in Milwaukee. So I started in the year 1996 at the Milwaukee Center. And I started as a part-time transportation coordinator there. I have ancestors in the Pioneer Cemetery, but I don't really know what they did. That's why I ended up uh, moving here, because my, my job was here. and. Uh, when I first moved here, I said, man, this, this compared to Selwood and the way that Portland's growing, this place is a gold mine. Well, actually, uh, my wife used to live here. She lived here for quite some time. And uh, she's always loved Milwaukee. We have friends in Milwaukee. It's uh, always been a part of her heart. Um, I had a job teaching at Nickus Junior High. I work, actually. I relocated from uh, another part of the country up here. And I've always loved Portland. I wanted the whole area and kind of landed in Milwaukee and just fell in love with it. I got the family home in Gresham after that, but it was just, it was too much for me to handle being a single person and, um, and uh, eventually sold the house and uh, found this little spot in Milwaukee. Well, when we moved to Oregon, because my son moved to Oregon about 10 years before we did, and we came out here to visit a lot, and it's beautiful out here. And we retired and decided that we wanted to just head out, because we have been 45 years on the same street in Lincoln, Nebraska, so. I think about 24, 25, they moved for the, that location we're at now. And we rented the property from the Hosley family. Funny story, my mom grew up in Milwaukee, right next door to where I grew up. Oh. We bought my great-grandmother's house. She lived right next door to my grandparents. Looking for a house last year in Milwaukee. It was just perfect for us. Well, my grandparents came from Italy. Okay. And they came here to farm. And at the, at the time, they um, wanted the better schools for their kids, so they looked for Milwaukee in a Milwaukee address so they could send us to Milwaukee schools. Uh, because of the community, uh, how beautiful Milwaukee is, uh, and how kind everyone was to play business market first time. Almost by happenstance, I found Milwaukee because I was looking all around the Portland area. And uh, I drove around, I walked around, and I said, you know, this reminds me a lot of the small town I grew up in. But they lived in the old apartments right down by the waterfront, right next to Vic's Tavern when they first oh, moved. Oh, right. And then oh, they bought a house. 
I wanted to change the scenery again and I know that I loved coming through Milwaukee because I had a cousin who went to the Waldorf school yeah. and so I got to know it then and so when we moved up here um, I just said you know like this is a nice place it's it's close enough to downtown Portland so we could easily get to work in school and it has more, it's more affordable it's easy to walk around there's the farmers market there's the bus depot it just it had everything that you could need when you're trying to acclimate to somewhere new and not be right in the middle of a city Kellogg Park oh. opened up and I can't, it was just off on Highway 99. Right. And just north of the town. And so when defense housing was available, we moved up there. So I went to first and second grade in Milwaukee. Um, well, the Olson, there was 13 boys and they were in North Dakota, Fargo. And then that was during the depression. And so my grandfather was the only one who left. He came to Milwaukee. We came to Milwaukee for just that, for the community, for the small town kind of vibes, um, and the nature too. We love how much nature is here. No, I moved here, um, I'm a fifth generation Oregonian, so I have strong roots in Oregon, but Milwaukee, we moved here um, to get closer to the kids' school. There was a school they were going to in this area, so. So the first generation of my family to come here would have been my great-grandfather, and that would have been Eugene uh, Light Sr. and his wife Rosa, and they came here and purchased the property in 1935 and started operating a um, what was then called Lakewood Greenhouses. Lakewood Greenhouses was um, originally opened in 1903, and so from 1903 to 1935, they grew vegetables and transported them into downtown Portland via the trolley on the trolley trail. Ooh. What don't I love about Milwaukee? Milwaukee is a real community. Um, we went down, they let the people make their choices. I loved it last weekend at the park, or weekend before. No, I think it was last weekend. Uh, where people got to choose what kind of flowers they want in the park, what was going on in the park. They let the community, the people here, come and be a part and be voices. Um, they accept everybody and uh, it's it's just coming here it has that small town feel and a community feel and where all the people who are in city hall and uh everybody here tends to nobody's better than each other everybody tends, tends to listen to the voices of milwaukee i think that's my favorite part it's amazing how easy it is uh, in a smaller town to be able to link up with other businesses and other mutual partners to make everybody's dream uh, kind of come true and, and come to fruition. Milwaukee's all about community to me. Like, as soon as I started showing up to stuff, I just was like kind of invited in and like encouraged to participate in all kinds of things. And, um, and I love that. Um, like it's not necessarily uh, like a, a really like wealthy city, but like like people show up and they've got heart, and they've got like good good intentions and good thoughts and and, and wanting to do well by their neighbors, and uh, so I just think it's a really really special place to be. Oh, I like the small town aspect. I used to work at Speeds, which is long gone now. I think it's called Libby's, but I, when I got out of high school, I worked at Speeds. And I used to come to the Victory Theater all the time when I was a kid. And I used to hang out out here. I had friends out here with the Milwaukee High. And my cousins went to Milwaukee High. And so we had connections with the, mostly through family and then through working out here. We sure like this market. And we also like the government that's going on here because we like the fact that they're really focused on sustainability and we like the fact that they really stay focused on preserving our tree canopy and, and really building the most incredible waterfront that we can possibly have. Oh, the bypass. So we have spring water corridor that goes all the way out to Boring. We have the trolley trail that goes down to Oregon City. 
and the other part of this spring water goes all the way up to the east side esplanade so i from my house can go north south or east for a 20 mile ride and basically not be on roads now my favorite store is now wow enchante yeah <laughs> And I really like the fact that it's a nice small city and that I've gotten to know a lot of people here in Milwaukee. The parks, all right, very good. Well, I like uh, its sense of community and the uh, uh, sort of camaraderie, the, the, the number of people who volunteer for various activities that make the city better. A number of things. I like that we're along the river. I love the small town feel. I wish we had more um, shops in the downtown, but hopefully that can be taken care of. I love that everybody talks to each other. You know most of the people that you come in contact with in town. Um, I like that. I like best love about Milwaukee. I love the people. I love how the neighbors are so welcoming. And I love the farmer's market, which we're at today. Excellent people. Um, people that love to work together and, and volunteer and people are friendly, they take care of each other. You know, Milwaukee is like you can you can know the mayor and you can know, you know, you see these people who make things run and you can have a real big connection to it. I feel like I belong, like I can, if I want something done I can go to City Hall and I can do something about it. If I have a question I can give somebody a call and, or stop by and get the answer. It's, it's easy to live within the small city bounds to me. I, everything. I love Milwaukee. I love the history of Milwaukee and especially the dogwoods and the blues. <laughs> yeah, I think we all can say it's kind of that small town feel, but we were right right on the edge of, of Portland, but we didn't, you know, it was just it was just so cool you could do anything. I mean, Go anywhere by Lake, yourself. Lake Road was all truck farms. I mean, you had radishes. I mean, with uh, the calcanos, the uh, series, series, yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, Well, that's that's what I. It was a pretty good size house uh, when it uh, burnt in. Uh, I guess it was about sixty four, sixty three. Mm -hmm. It burnt. Uh, we came home and. You know, everybody, we were devastated. Uh, I lost my pet turtle. Oh. That was hard. And two dogs. Oh, no. Uh, but uh, um, they uh, went ahead, and by the time we got home, across the field, there was a milk shed. And the people all took a uh, donation and milked, uh, rented the milk shed for us. I love the dogwood. Oh my gosh, we just love how Milwaukee has this small town charm with um, such a wonderful community. We just love the community here. My most favorite thing about Milwaukee is um, all of the parks. All the parks and how walkable mm -hmm. it is everywhere. Uh, I love the small town feel right outside of Big Town. Uh, you know, the, the history here is really great, and I love the downtown environment here. But everybody in our family, I think it was almost an expectation in Milwaukee to be in band. It was originally called the Milwaukee Senior Center, and then it switched to the Milwaukee Center. And then just recently, this past year, we had the word community in there, and now it's the Milwaukee Community Center. Okay. And the reason we've been trying for years to, even even when Joan was there, just to try to make it more inclusive to the whole community. Uh, it's just a great little community, you know. It's it's not the big city. It's not outback rural. It's just a nice community with nice people, and nice neighbors, and. Um, it's just a nice place to be. It's close to everything. That's one of the other things I like about it. You can get anywhere from here in a short time. You can be at the beach, you can be at the mountain, you can be in downtown Portland. It's it's really accessible. Any, any, for me, any city that's organized and has a nice enough library, you guys already did and do. Um, yeah. But also the conveniences of it. Uh, it had 
a small town feel, but we're on the edge of obviously the southern edge of Portland. Uh, the the convenience factor of uh, what I kind of call like the Happy Valley strip mall um, town center, you know, those amenities of kind of convenience are very close by, but there's also kind of this centralized small town feel to it that was kind of neat. And it was easier to grasp onto a sense of community with something like that than say, you know, a neighborhood of like Southeast Portland or something of that nature. And there was some familiarity with the area too. So I felt a lot more, I mean, I was just more comfortable here. I've always felt very comfortable here, so. Like a small town feel. Uh, it's small, quiet. Uh, uh, music not that bad. Yes. Great people. And um, I think it's a city that really activates its citizenship. And I love seeing a level of involvement go up, it feels like, over the years. And watching, you know, young families continue to want to move here is awesome. It's, I've always felt that the education system in this area was good, good. and uh, we've had a great relationship with the high school and the grade school both as far as building classes and all that kind of stuff. And we donated a bunch of, of equipment to uh, Putnam. Uh, boy, it's just such a pleasant place to live. You know, we've got some land and uh, we've got the creek running through our backyard and we just love it. I like the community feel. Great place to raise kids. I like to take my grandchildren to where I went to when I was a child, and a lot of those places are no longer around. I took my children to Perry Pharmacy not too long ago, and we had ice cream sundaes there. And so that was really nice. We got to sit on the benches or the stools that I used to do as a kid and drink green phosphates and, you know, just hang out at the counter. And I, my favorite thing is the trolley trail. But we seldom locked the house. Yeah, we didn't lock the door. More or less never locked it, except it ended up whenever we went on trips. And the thing, even now, I mean, back then, everybody, you knew somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody, and I, we still find that out. Oh, right yeah. Now. Definitely. Years now. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing I like best about Milwaukee, that it's it's big enough a big a big enough city but I still get a small town feel from it so like the community of Milwaukee is very community we were went by the tree and we the places that we stopped we stopped at the dogwood tree which would be 32nd and Harrison and then we'd go up the hill and we'd stop up at 40th and Monroe mm -hmm. because that was the top of the hill. Uh, then it's, it's missing now was the old Dairy Queen. We used, I used to do yard work as a kid. And oh. then we drive over and get peanut butter parfaits at the Dairy Queen. <laughs> One of my favorite stories about Milwaukee. Oh boy, I guess I, I really love the uh, Bing Cherry story about, uh, about uh, Mr. Bing and the development of the Bing Cherry. Davis Graveyard. So Davis Graveyard is something I've been involved in with for years and years and years. They're looking back at pictures and like, would that have been 2004? Yeah. No, 2001? Wow, that's a long time to be involved with a crazy group of people. That's tough because after this long, there's a lot. We spend a lot of time just you know, sit on our bikes and you take off during the day and, and uh, you come back, you know, before dark, you know. Yeah. 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 Parents don't have to worry about, you know, you disappear or anything like that. That's Go Doug. Well, we run around on the beach <laughs> and, uh, and in, in the forest next to it. I think especially Ron and Gary ended up going out on uh, boats in the river. On the Willamette River. Yeah. Uh, I, I piped up a one-word statement and everybody turned around and stared at me like I was a ghost. <laughs> and uh, basically badmouthed me for my statement. And I was like, wow, now I know why people don't like doing this kind of stuff. Uh, one of my favorite stories about Milwaukee, I don't know if it's true, is that the old farmhouse that's still there on Harrison was the home of the owner of the amusement park there. And apparently he kept alligators or crocodiles in his basement in the winter. I would say my, my most 
funnest memory, it, it was a yearly memory, it was better than Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, it was the Milwaukee Festival Days Parade. My sister and I were just obsessed with that day. Mm -hmm. My grandma was a, an amazing float builder and she would build these big elaborate floats from when we were just really little. We got to be on these floats all the time. And uh, the parade route went right in front of Milwaukee Floral because it started at Rouse Junior High. So it was a great place for all of our family to meet and fill the front parking lot and have all the nephews and nieces and kiddos and grandkids on the float. And uh, we'd always have a big old bag of Milwaukee popcorn and candy land popcorn and sir, you know, serve drinks and, and have a big old spread for all the family to come and watch their kids mm -hmm. walk by on them. Another thing too, this is kind of an interesting story, being from Island Station and going to Milwaukee, all the schools here, we walked across that railroad trestle all the time. That was the only way we came back and forth. From fourth grade, I would walk across that trestle and that when I was short enough, we had a there was a catwalk underneath, right. so you could walk on the catwalk, and I and I remember I wasn't, I was short enough that I didn't have to duck, and as I kept getting taller, I'd have to keep ducking, and finally <laughs> I just walk on the top uh -huh. because I got too big. Uh -huh. But I would, I was an altar boy, and so I would come in the morning, I would walk across the trestle, go do my altar boy duties, come back home, change for school, then go back to school. Wow, the oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah, that's what I thought. Did, did I do that in fourth grade? That was pretty young. <laughs> I was actually lobbying council. I was at a council meeting making my point that because Home Avenue is one of the only streets that goes north-south, North South only goes goes north south for a big part of the east side. That it should be have a, a higher status because it has a lot of of traffic on it and a lot of cut through traffic on it. And so I was trying to get the street upgraded to get more enhancements and more improvements on it. And it surprised me when I when one of the counselors that I did not expect all of a sudden says, "He's right. We need to do this," and it got through. And I, I was just really shocked of the counselor that. that that actually stepped up and says, hey, this guy's got the right idea and he's doing the right thing. And I think there's been a couple other times when I testified before council on different things that it's always the interesting that who is it is that steps up and says, yeah, this is right. This is something we need to do. And it's like, I'm surprised that that counselor, that wasn't the one I was counting on. I'll tell you something about the natural grass field at Milwaukee High School. Um, you know, when you stand on the earth, there's a curvature, and, and the curvature of the earth says that you can, the farthest you can see is 16 miles. It's not possible <laughs> to see any farther than that, okay, because of the curvature of the earth. When you stood on one side of the Milwaukee football field, you couldn't see anything below the knees of the people on the other side of the field. <laughs> Because it had such a hump, and, and try playing soccer on top of that. I, I mean, it it was it was at least a three foot hump in the middle of the field that gradually came up, and then it was a big sand pit in the middle, and it was. So he owned the liquor store there, and, and my dad and I would go in there, and you weren't supposed to have kids in there in those days. And I'd go in with my dad, and he'd go over, and he drank black velvet, so he'd go over and get a pint, take it up, and and. Uh, Bullhander would say, well, he says, you know, that's $4.95 or something like that. And he'd tell him, he says, well, I don't have it right now. Can you put it on my tab? And he'd get his little book out, and there was like a little page in there, and he'd write it down on there. My dad was always good for it. It was just, you know, they didn't have a lot of money back then. Yeah. And then he'd say, you know, I'd like to take Barb out to get a bite to eat. He wouldn't have 20 bucks I could borrow with him. <laughs> And he'd not only get a bottle, but he'd get 20 bucks. Uh, we were fortunate, the three of us, to be on the football team uh, when I went to the state championship. And to watch the city, the community, that's where the Mayberry came out to celebrate. Even though we lost, they celebrated with us. They, uh, the Elks took us in and gave us dinner. and. And I said, okay, I want to have a community garden club to go to. So I went to, uh, saw online that the Milwaukee Garden Club was happening. 
and I walked in the door and Enid Briggs said, you're a new person! <laughs> See, <laughs> she basically took me under her wing. I loved it. She was she was such a wonderful lady. Yeah, and you know the library was where City Hall is now. I mean, there was other stuff in there too, but I, that's where the library was. Mm -hmm. And you know, we'd ride our bikes down and fill up our baskets and ride home in the summertime. Now, mm -hmm. and uh, was it a folk trio? Um, the Princeton Singers with John Kreitler and Terry Gillum and, and um, we sang around the Milwaukee area. We were on Hoop Nanny, Gene Brenner's Hoop Nanny on TV oh, a couple nice. times. <laughs> and, uh, so I got involved in my kids' school and eventually ended up running what was um, an environmental magnet school. Seth Llewellyn was an environmental magnet school. Mm -hmm. And so I got to know people through that and then got to know about the Neighborhood Association and then one thing led to another and pretty soon I'm over volunteering. <laughs> I guess I really like the old oh, one. Oh, they hear that a lot. It's too bad that's at the junior high. Right, right. It was cold. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Well, I'm, in the past, when I was little, I spent a lot of time at Perry's Pharmacy, Dairy Queen, yeah. Milwaukee Pharmacy, yeah. the Meat Market, all those businesses sort of. down there. <coughs> my mom would go to Perry's and pay my grandma's bills. Uh, I was just going to say, so Meals on Wheels, how many do you serve right every now, day? You know, right now we're at about 250. A day? A day. We grab the fishing pole in summertime and the dog and I'm just blocks from the river and we go down and play on Elk Rock Island and fish and we make spears and uh, just I mean we were we were just oh, that safe stuff. running wild kind of like Tom Sawyer and Huckberry Finn. Uh, the first time we saw the Christmas ships in Milwaukee Bay was great uh, a couple years ago that was so much fun and then uh, doing the umbrella parade a couple years ago with uh, you know, the Disney princesses <laughs> um, well, it was before the expressway, so we got to play in the celery fields and the celery flats. <laughs> they put the parade to I worked at Milwaukee Elementary for many years, and I think the big thing that came was that the students there, they wanted the candy. They weren't into the whole <laughs> celebration of Milwaukee or the football team or whatever. They just wanted the candy was what they wanted. <laughs> Or my cousin and I would run down to the creek and cry to fish or fish or do something. You didn't have to worry about being home at a certain time. If you wanted to eat, you made it home at a certain time. But. <laughs> and, um, and there was this beautiful duck pond. And so it was like we went from, you know, living in the suburbs, what we consider the suburbs of Los Angeles, to, you know, the suburbs of Milwaukee. And it was, it looked like a Calvin and Hobbes backdrop. <laughs> There's just so many small acts of kindness that I see around the town. Uh, there's just too many there. I, I, one doesn't stand out, but I see it kind of every day and every day. Yeah. Well, I'm working on my thesis project about the Hadleys, who opened the first uh, Robin Bakery in Milwaukee. Uh, one very cool piece of many wonderful slices of history. Okay. 224 is has been a very nice I mean I remember playing on it in 1969 when they were building it my dad and I would fly kites out there and we see the construction uh, construction vehicles so I actually saw my street become a dead end and all of the construction at 224 so and he one good thing he did when my dad died in uh, 42 March 42 uh, he was cremated, and then he put they put him in a brass urn, and he and my, he told my mom and says, "I'll hold that urn for you." Uh -huh. And when we got back, we went after the urn, and at that time we were we were uh, living at quite a greenhouses, and the first thing he I, I went with her, and the first thing he said, he says, she was. She said they lived in Wichita, and he says, what's Wichita? Because <laughs> he was from Wichita, Kansas. Oh. <laughs> and he gave her the urn, and he never charged her anything for wow. for uh, holding it. So the people in Milwaukee were, were exceptionally fine people.
Just working here at Speed, you know, uh -huh. my first job. Okay, and you enjoyed that? Buck and a quarter an hour. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, it put me through my first year of university. So. There you the DLC was one of these great things because uh, it actually brought me down to the Milwaukee Museum, and that's how I got started with the Milwaukee Museum as my volunteer life. Uh, and uh, we were here doing a project on historic homes, and uh, I fell in love with this place uh, when we first got here. And then so I continue to, to volunteer as Santa. That's a big deal to me. And, yeah. and hence the appearance because yeah. I, all, all those 45 years I was well dressed and well groomed and now look at me. Probably, I'll let my mom chime in, we spent a lot of time outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, long leash. Um, long days outdoors with friends. Lots of kids our ages. Um, playing traditional games, lots of sports, um, maybe getting into a tiny bit of trouble here and there, but by and large, um, playing nice. We had our little candy striper uniforms on, and when we were asked to deliver something, an IV bag from the pharmacy to the medical wing, then, then we would walk briskly because we took our duties seriously and wanted to be prompt mm -hmm. and it wasn't until there was some sort of public interest thing on TV and we were tapped to be part of that the the next weekend we were there and we got lots of we didn't know you were twins they thought we were one person working oh. from <laughs> eight to four <laughs> yes. I lived on, uh, uh, on Johnson Creek Boulevard in Wichita and we would walk from there down to the pool where Waldorf is now and back sometimes a couple of times a day. And our parents didn't know where we were. The Milwaukee Environmental Stewards Group has been fun. Um, what we've been able to do, handing out bags and, and then I, there's a sewing group that I work with that we've had a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, the Christmas ships. When we went to the Christmas ships. We went to the Christmas ships this last um, holiday season and it just made me feel like I was a part of a part of something and it just made me feel part of the community. Uh, Pig Champion. We used to live on my street who sold his songs to some rock band and it lived in the house right next door to me. And here was this man that you would think was really poor but he actually had these big royalties and uh, didn't like banks much and the lady next door at 7-Eleven used to cash his checks for him. And it was that's part of the love of Milwaukee. My boss actually lived on the river yeah. and we were down there trying to move our air in from his first level of his house up to the second floor because he said the flood was only going to get so high. And uh, while we're up moving stuff, the water's coming up. You can actually see it. It comes up. It's just oh, coming up. Yeah. You're up to your knees. <laughs> and so we got everything up to the second floor, and the water kept coming up to the point where that was all underwater, too. Um, my friend and I used to uh, walk late at night from her uh, apartment, which is over at Milwaukee High School, by Milwaukee High School. And we would walk to the Safeway and we would get ice cream. And, uh, and we thought we were so, you know, clever and sneaky and cool. And you know, I'd have to say the, the Milwaukee Museum, actually, because, you know, for, for a small town to have this museum that, you know, um, curates everything that happened in Milwaukee is pretty amazing because the people are allowed to contribute to the museum. And, you know, in other cities, other bigger cities, and even smaller cities, you wouldn't be able to get that kind of uh, participation or engagement from the city. So, I would say the Milwaukee Museum is like, I know it's not a story, but it's one of my favorite things about I went, they had a flood in Milwaukee in, in 64, I mean. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I went down to see if I could help him in any way because the, he, he was closed because the water was in the building. In the building. Oh man, that was a real flood. And it was the worst one they've had since I know. Uh, and I went down to see if I could anything I could do to help him take his leaks for one week or two weeks so they wouldn't disband. And, oh. and he ran me off the parking lot. He told me he's a little too busy for me right now. I just uh, to just go ahead. I got a fire truck coming in. To, to pump and I don't need you around. And I said, okay, see you later, bye. And uh, I'm driving off the parking lot, I thought, I'm gonna own this place someday and you're not gonna work here. Uh, <laughs>
happy birthday, Milwaukee. You, you've you aged beautifully. Oh. Happy, happy birthday, birthday Milwaukee. Milwaukee! Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Well, sure. Happy anniversary to 120 years. 120. Yes. Oh, happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. I'm really glad to live here, and I want to continue doing that till the day I die. Yeah, happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy 120th. Yes, I was around for your 100th birthday, and I'm happy to be around for your 120th. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's 120 years already. And yes, absolutely. Happy, happy birthday, Milwaukee. And here's to another 120, right? right. Yay! Yay. Yeah. 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 Right. Yay. Right. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, my hometown, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, 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 Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Happy 120th anniversary, Milwaukee. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. I know I haven't been here for 120 years, but sometimes it feels like it. And I'm very <laughs> proud and look forward to many more birthdays with you. Um, well, Milwaukee, uh, 120 years is looking good on you. Just bon compliano. A chita, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. You're looking good. Happy anniversary, city of Milwaukee. 120 years. Going strong. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Milwaukee's always been good to me and, and our family, and we hope to see you for another 120 years at least. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Thank you so much. Well, happy birthday, city of Milwaukee. It's been a pleasure growing up here in this community, and I'm looking forward to a lot more years of hanging out and, and being involved. Happy birthday, Milwaukee, for 120 years. I've only been here a few of those, but I'm glad you're here. Happy birthday, Milwaukee! Happy birthday, Milwaukee! Happy birthday, Milwaukee! Dogwood City! Happy birthday, Milwaukee! Uh, happy 120th anniversary, Milwaukee, from the Spicer family. Oh.